Welcome everyone to the Adventures with the D20 Babe show. I am Curtis Weeb. I am the GM. This is episode 10 and the episode title is The Life and Times of Van Tyler. So we'll see how that all unfolds tonight. Um, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. This is the portion of the show where I pass things over to the girls and I drink something. <laughs> Hi Thanks for showing up. Uh, we're doing really well and I want to thank out everyone watching for that because you're sharing it with your fans and because you're talking about it it allows us to exist <laughs> um, and keep going so that is really cool thank you so much for that and um, we also want to just explain the the uh, contest that we do every week so we um, what we do is we give one of our players an advantage dice which actually can keep us alive <laughs> and the advantage dice is awarded um, by you for uh, hashtagging either um, on our ha on our um, on Twitter, just hashtag D20 Babes um, for any the best moment, the best line, just anything that you want to hashtag basically about the show. And um, yeah, we we award this wonderful trophy, which is just symbolic of our amazingness. No, <laughs> it's symbolic <laughs> of our um, of the advantage dice. So you remember who's got the advantage dice. Because sometimes we forget. Yeah, we... And even, even <laughs> with the trophy, you know, it's like yeah. right here and we're like, oh, I rolled badly. Oh, I suck. If only I had advantage. <laughs> if only. <laughs> so we, we've been joking that we might light this up. It might be... Uh, or we have to put it on fire or something. <laughs> <laughs> I never said fire. It's kind of like the Hunger Games, just like a... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So we're going to um, announce the winner um, of the advantage dice for, for this one. One and then we'll say who uttered the line. Actually, we can do that now because we're yeah, we can do that. yeah, we'll do that now. We're changing the rules up a bit. So um, it goes to Andrew Cess. So that's at Andrew C E S for mentioning actually a moment in the game, and that's for Shriella um, for acting like Storm from X Men and blow yes. blowing <laughs> the dudes off the roof <laughs> when they all went flying, and it was pretty cool. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, anybody else have anything to add before the game? We also have another contest going. Uh, there is this wonderful dice bag, and Curtis is going to be writing a secret word <laughs> that <laughs> we totally can't see, <laughs> and he's, but you guys know. Uh, and if any of us says the word, then we get the dice bag. And if we don't say the word this episode, then it moves on to the next episode. Mm -hmm. None yes. of us, yeah, none of us got it last episode. So um, <laughs> I didn't plan for this. Uh, <laughs> oh shoot! <sure. laughs> I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see the word or not. Okay. No, we're gonna close our eyes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's close our eyes. Can't look. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because last time someone <laughs> looked. So yeah. I don't know if you guys can see the word. That's the secret word for today. And if any of the girls says that chat, please let me know because I'm probably gonna miss it. And uh, it's kind of up to you all. We'll be monitoring the chat, and they get so, to they get to win the. Um, <laughs> you can look now. Sorry. <laughs> 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 we might play back. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So um, that is the that is one thing. There's one more thing that I'm gonna get the chat. You can either do talk about it in the chat. I'm probably gonna miss it because I'm not gonna be paying attention. So you can tweet at me. Uh, Shannon, so D20 Babe and I are going to be doing an, not a stream, but we're going to be doing like whenever we have an hour or two, we're going to be recording and uploading to her YouTube channel um, just a show. And we are choosing between two <laughs> games, and you guys get to choose what it's going to be. The first option is a game of Mage. If you guys have seen Carnival, it's going to be set in a 1930s carnival. And uh, it'll be using the mage system, which is like this really awesome magic is bending reality sort of thing. And I love the system. And the other option is uh, Conan. <coughs> and so um, <laughs> so so I think this is like the second edition. It's a, th it's a D20 system, and I absolutely love the system as well. So you can just tweet at me which you would like to see me and Shannon play. And again, that won't be streamed. It'll just be uploaded to YouTube because we don't have time for more streams. <laughs> so anyway, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> Just gonna adjust my camera here a little bit. Oh, I fucked that up. Okay, um, so I think that's it. I think that's all of uh, the announcements. You guys ready to uh, get dramatic or what? Yeah. <laughs> Bring it up. <laughs> so glad I have this today. <laughs> I think I need it. Can we like steal it? 
Can you use it against Van if she does this? Exactly. <laughs> if she hurts my feelings, you can, can I do use it? Whatever you want. Yeah, there's Please no, don't. There's no rules. And, you know, <laughs> very few. <laughs> All right, so let's get. I always forget to put the music on at the beginning. Uh, let's just temper the music here because sometimes it's too loud. <laughs> Chad, I'm going to put the music on. Please let me know if it's too loud or if you can't hear it. Just we want to make sure the levels are right for you guys. So um, let's go here. Let's randomly do this one. Also, you guys, I don't know if you guys can hear it or not. I'll turn it up a little bit. Yep, can now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, no, that was the follower notification. That was the follower Thanks notification. Follower. Thanks for the follow. Oh, hey! yeah! <laughs> I, we, have, we have it on there, and I never call it out because it's it, it's distracting. Yeah, so. before we get started, I want to say thank you to anyone who's followed us since the Critical Role panel that happened at Wizard World Portland. Uh, we got a huge shout-out from Laura Bailey there. Um, so if there's anyone tuning in who's new this week, you can also get caught up on all our videos on our YouTube, which is youtube.com slash d20babe with no S. Yes. Yeah, we, uh, Jen and I were actually watching that together, and we both fell off the chair, yeah. our chairs. We were like, I was like, she did not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so awesome. Yeah, it was yeah, I know. I'm, so, I'm still like, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so... You guys are... I can't hear the music. I'm sorry. It's, it's, I need some ambiance here. <laughs> it's really quiet. <laughs> Maybe it should be a quiet song. Okay, so... You guys are... This is literally moments after the drop. Uh, the reveal that um, this woman, who I said she's she's... Uh, probably in her mid thirties, she's human and she's got, her hair is, it's like a mixture of like blonde and red and it's uh, got heavy braids in it and she's fairly, she's very busty, she's very curvy, she's kind of got bigger arms and, uh, she's got like long sleeve tattoos, uh, pretty clear that they're like sailor type tattoos, um, and she just says that line, no words for your wife, and the reaction happens, that happened last time. And she just kind of cracks a half smile when that reaction happens. She's like, oh, you've been up to your old tricks, have you, Van? Please, why don't everyone, why don't we, everyone have a seat? And there is, she's right at her desk, right? So there's a bunch of chairs around. And she just motions to the the desk and she sits down. She's still rubbing her wrists because they were tied together. Helen... Jolly Brute. <laughs> Jolly Brute. That's Brute. her name. Please sit. We can we can catch up. We can. Uh, I'm sure you're interested. In what's happened here? Uh, you guys have done me a huge favor and in clearing out those those pirates. Can I get you anything? Drink maybe. What do you have? She feels the heat and she's <laughs> like, and look, <laughs> looks at you, Van. Okay, I'm sensing um, things here. I'm going to just go downstairs for a quick second. Bring up some drinks for everyone. Maybe you need to have a conversation. And she looks at the captain, and he just kind of nods. And his two associates, the, the two muscly women that are with him, they all leave downstairs. You can hear them talking as they go. And the captain's like, so what exactly has happened here? And you can hear Helen who you now know is her name, her voice is, it's, it's pretty loud, pretty boisterous, and she's like, well, last ship that pulled in here was a, was a boat full of all these different pirates, and their voices start to trail off, and they disappear, leaving the four of you alone um, on the top stair. I'm going to switch the camera to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Helen, guys. Helen. Yeah. What happened to No More Secrets? It's not really a secret. Apparently not. (laughs) I mean, I know she's not my wife. She's not my wife. Why does she call you wife? Well, it was She just just made it up? No, 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 no. She didn't make anything up. But it's more like an ex-wife. Things are over with us. That's not what she said. She said wife. Present tense. Like now. Well, maybe we can all have a conversation later on, but things are... No, I don't, I don't need to talk to her about this. 
I think you need to explain, like, oh, like, why, why does she? Why do you think she's your ex-wife, but she doesn't? She does. She was just teasing, and she doesn't know about you. So I mean, I'm sorry she addressed it that way, but she is my ex-wife, and it's an old story. It was a crazy time. I didn't think about what I was doing, and I just went with it and got married. But it wasn't anything serious, and now it's over. Everything. It's in good terms. I'm sorry I never told you about her, but. It's over. Like how long ago was it? About two years ago. Three years ago. Four years ago. Five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm sorry. I'm laughing. <laughs> you look cute when you laugh. You just gotta stop it. It makes me forget why I'm angry at you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I. I really. I don't worry about her. I love you. That's the past. This is the present. You're my present, family is my number one thing, and you're my wife, and I'm sorry this happened this way. I'm really sorry. Yeah, because you guys are my family, and this is it. So, like, no more secrets, no more lies, and I need you to just, like, be upfront. I don't want to keep finding out all these things. You know, like, just... Is there anything else? Okay, maybe... I should explain to you guys why this happened. I probably wasn't my best in the past and I was worried about, not worried, I was only caring about interests and I was only caring about my own well-being and maybe fortune and that stuff, but I'm changed now. Probably Maybe I used my ex-wife a little bit, but with you it's different. I told you the truth, I am changed, I am reformed, and no more tricks. Okay. You just talked, right? I don't want to talk to Helen. Okay. Okay. Sorry about this, guys. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> So I didn't mean to have a domestic dispute in front of you guys. That's okay. No. Like you said, we're family. Anything that happens with you guys, you can have it happen with us around. We're not going to judge. Okay. I know. Ah, hey, Petunia. Hey. And I just kind of... <laughs> do you want some food? That's just an old drumstick, <laughs> Petunia. How old is that? I don't remember. Yeah, okay, no. It's okay. You can have that. That's very sweet. Thank you. Okay, and then I just kind of hug you. <laughs> it's okay to be sad sometimes. You, it's okay. Okay, well, I gotta fix myself before Helen comes back. So I, I you do like hear it. voices coming back up the stairs as you're having this conversation, and um, it, Helen is leading everybody, and she she got like um, a, pr- a fairly large uh, barrel. And it's clearly a an alcohol container of some kind, but it's large. And she's got another armful of mugs, and she's walking up, and she's like very boisterous, and she walks in and just pretends that nothing has happened. And the captain is not there, and either is his two associates. They have not come back up, and she just says, "Oh, the captain just wanted to let you know he will be on the ship. Uh, we have already talked about getting that ship repaired. It's gonna be a little while, though. I, I have to be honest." You're going to be here for probably at least a few days. Um, So, uh, drinks. And she goes and just slams this uh, barrel on on her desk. And there's a little cork in there. And she corks it, turns the faucet, and starts filling it. And it's not ale. It's like hard alcohol. You're thinking it's probably rum of some kind. You can just smell it. And and like, we're talking like tankards here. And she just starts filling them. I think we're going to need these. Shreela first. (laughs) <laughs> uh, not so full, not so full. I like to take things slow and easy. All right, well, no problem. She fills it up a little bit for you and starts passing a large, full thing of rum to each of you, and she sits down with a big... <sighs> All right, so, everything's worked out. I sent some tension. Everything's all good. Okay. What she said. All right, well... So yes, as you might have heard the conversation, I was walking down the stairs. Uh, we were, our town was attacked by pirates, and um, 
As Van knows a little bit about me, I was once a pirate, and she referred to my pirate name, which I no longer go by. My name is now Helen Locke only, not the Jolly Brute, as I used to go by on the high seas. Uh, I'm a respectable woman now, and I am the proprietor of this town and of, of the tavern and the inn. And uh, anyway, I guess karmically I was punished as my town was attacked and taken over by pirates. Um, weird how that is. But you guys helped out, and I am really, really grateful. The, I've already uh, organized with some local people that they can, people can come out of their homes now. We've had quite a few losses. Most of my town guard has been decimated. But I think we'll be okay. I should be able to recruit some people as more ships come in. But, um, yeah, right now we're, we're down to a skeleton crew. Why are town. you still alive? Uh, they were trying to extort me, and they were trying to find out where my stash of booty was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <but you're>, yeah. <laughs> I haven't had booty for a really long I, I'm broke. You're lucky. <laughs> no booty was well, no booty. The, the reality is that I put most of my booty in this town, so uh, it's there's not a lot left to go around. But um <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, so she starts to drink out of the mug and she puts it back down. So Van, how have your travels been? Pretty good. As you can see, I'm also renewed. I want to introduce you to my wife, Shriella. Oh, that would be where the tension was coming from. Yeah. Well, congratulations. She is a wonderful woman. And uh, you were very lucky to have her. We we shared a brief romance on the high seas, and the sea is a very strange place. But I had a wonderful time with her. I'm sure you will as well. And she holds up her mug in, in cheers to you. Cheers. <laughs> anyway, this is Leah, and this is Petunia. I'm Helen, as I already said. You are welcome to stay here as, as long as you need until the ship is repaired. But as I said, it's probably going to be a few days. I... I do have a question for you, though. There was quite a large contingency of these pirates. I can see from the carnage in the plaza that most of them have been killed. Uh, you can, and she peers out the window, and you guys can <coughs> see through the window down into that plaza. There are people now coming out of the houses that surround the dock, and they're starting to collect the bodies and, and starting to deal with them. But um, she's like... Do you, is that all of them? Were you able to take care of all of them? Were you no. expecting more? No, I, I don't know how many are actually here. We have been captive for a week now. I don't know if more have come in from a different side of the island. I don't know what the situation is. Did you, like the ones that were here, you got all of them, right? No. No. There were a couple that took off right at the end there. We couldn't keep track, there were so many people. Considering that we were ambushed, though, I thought that we fought quite valiantly. Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. I, as I said, I'm very happy with, with the results. And, uh, I mean, we obviously couldn't handle it ourselves. It's a lesson to be learned for the future, for sure. And depending on how much booty you have left, maybe we could find the last two. They shouldn't be too hard to kill. Are you going to go do that yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... I would be grateful. I don't know exactly where they were. Some of them remained here in town, but I'm pretty sure that there was a few others that had moved further into the island. There could be more of them, I don't know. And my town's safety is, like, super important. If you guys are willing to find the last of them, if you are sure that some got away, maybe you can find where they are and take care of them. <clears throat> I'll, I'll pay you what I can. It's not a lot. And I will make sure that the, the mask repair is done for free. Well, does that really help me? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. we probably want to get out of here eventually, Petunia. Yeah. Well, yeah. Seems like a nice place. It's better than jail. I don't know. I well, think we should, yeah. We'll have to could... talk that over. Yeah. Of course. Uh, and meanwhile, there are facilities here for you to stay in. Mm -hmm. If you just leave this building and take a right, you'll see that there is a small inn there. I will have you 
put up free of charge, as I will with the, the captain and his remaining men. I don't know how... You're the ranger. Leah, how long uh, do we have before his trail gets cooled? Um, not long. Um, the sooner we leave, the better if we do decide to do this. I just think that we need to really think about why we're doing this, exactly. Because I'm broke. <laughs> we're not doing very well with money. No. <laughs> we <need> some money. <laughs> I, I gave away all my money, and I don't even remember what to. I just yeah. have zero gold. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was called, what was it? The Testy Unicorn? Oh. Ooh, the oh, Testy right. Unicorn. I'm just, I'm not, I've never been good at money, but uh, I kind of need it. If I'm I think you just drank it all, that's <laughs> Well, I have seven gold pieces. <clears throat> so well, she, she's still sitting there while you're having this full conversation. In full view, she's hearing it, and she's like, I've been there, all right? I know what it's like to not have money, and trying to make a way for yourself in this in this time it can be difficult so I will pay you what I can I believe I can afford about 100 gold and whatever you find up there I mean they are pirates they probably got something you're welcome to it oh, I mean you can just hang out here too I, it's you guys are like <clears throat> saved our town so you have free reign here you can do whatever you want but if you're looking to make a bit of extra money we the options to, there. We have to stay here anyway for the ship to be fixed. So maybe we can, if they haven't gone too far, if if the trail's not too cold, we can see if we can kick some iron. If <laughs> this is something we decide, we'd have to keep it from the Justicars because they will not let you guys run off on a bounty hunt. No. No. Nope. Uh, so maybe they'll come with us. But I'm sure maybe Helen they... can help us maybe go secretly yeah i'm not going to be getting you guys in any more trouble if you are <coughs> I, I wasn't aware that you are being held by the justicars but i'm run it by them they're stuck here with you guys what else are they gonna do maybe rin will come <laughs> it's worth asking yeah. yeah if we decide whatever you want to do i'm just i'm happy to have your company if you guys want some more drinks, and she's already finished her parsley. <laughs> like, she basically, every time you guys talk, she's just going like this. And then when she talks, she puts it down, fills it up, talks for a bit, and then just puts more back. Really classy, man. <laughs> hey. Hey, I never said I was classy, lady. <laughs> I'm, oh. a, I'm a pirate. I'm sorry, I thought th that conversation was just for Van. Oh, no, I heard it. <laughs> Good ears. She's literally sitting a foot away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm whispering! <laughs> Anyway, I'm angry whispering. <laughs> <laughs> so she's Should like, we? she just stands up. Any questions, guys? I should probably go talk to the people in the town here. They're probably wondering what's happening. You have free reign, like I said. Head over to the inn. I'm sure they can take care of you with drinks or whatever you want. You can bring this cask with you if you want as well. Finish it off. Whatever it is you want to do. So I, I pick up the cask. And start walking away with it. <laughs> it's as big as you are. Yeah, yeah you go on your way. You right. go, yeah. So she heads down the stairs and she <clears throat> disappears. You pack up that cask and put it over your back, <laughs> cork it. All right, what are you guys doing? Ben, do you trust the Talon lady? I do trust her, yeah. She kind of just threw you under the bus, so I just want to make sure that before we go off killing people we don't even know who could be here for a reason we don't even know that you trust her, you trust her instincts about these guys. Wow. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah. yeah. I, I was thinking we could talk to them to, before killing them. This, this time I won't just go and kill. I'll actually talk to him. Uh, it yeah. actually changes um, so much. Well, uh, I know. <laughs> sometimes, I, sometimes that doesn't happen. <laughs> you have good intentions. But when do. you start killing, yeah. I, I, I can't stop. Yeah. Well, what matters is the intention. Yeah, yeah. That's, oh, that, <laughs> that's why we're friends. Thank you. I, I feel so much better. <laughs> but yeah, maybe she, maybe she's a pirate. Maybe she took over the town. We don't know. It could yeah, be. Yeah. Why did they? Why? Why was she not killed? Huh? She just was tied up conveniently in her office. For all we know, she could be sending us into an ambush. That is true. Well, like I did suggest it though. That was my idea. <laughs> I'm sending us into an ambush. Are you with her? Yeah. You did well, say you like pirates. 
spirits. This is all kind of fishy. <laughs> right. Who are you? All of our pastors. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea anymore. Do you have secrets too? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, at the very least, I'm down to investigate it. We can try to find out where these guys went and, and try to talk to them if we mm. could find them. Yeah. yeah. At the very worst, we just get a bunch of booty. <laughs> I, I don't think it works like that, Petunia. I, I, finding out so many things traveling the world, so many things are disappointing. <laughs> well, okay. Yes, so, that is true. I'm learning the same. It's hard. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Anyways, I don't, <clears throat> I don't really know if I can trust her because I haven't seen her in such a long time. She did used to be a pirate and had her ways, but she was fun. But that doesn't really help us. Okay, yeah, that does not help us right now. <laughs> I mean, she, I don't know. I don't know if we can trust her. We should go, like, just research. We should just get out of here. Mm-hmm. Can we just, yeah, I'll just ask her. <laughs> and I grab your glass and put it down. Like, I'm going to get a bit of a keg and try to, like, pour it out of my back. Get more. <laughs> get more. All right, so you guys head out into the plaza. You're going to leave this building? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can see as you walk out that um, <laughs> Helen is standing and she's talking to a couple of the townspeople and, and uh, she seems very familiar with them and they look like they're a bit relieved. You can just get this sense that there is a weight that's been lifted uh, off of them and the captain is currently at the next to the ship and he's talking with a few people and you can see now that, um, uh, what's his name, um, Whitford's body has been moved. You're not sure to wear. <laughs> Uh, but you can see the dwarf, Heron, is standing at the side of the boat, and he's kind of, he looks like he's just dazed, like he's completely out of it. Um, and Blythe and Rin are standing at the edge of the dock, and they're just kind of watching. They see you guys come out, and they start to walk over towards the door where you guys are. And uh, they approach you. Rin just steps forward. Oh, looks like we're going to be here for a little while. Ship is uh, going to take a few days to repair. Whitford, our leader, is dead. And uh, I guess that leaves me in charge. What the fuck am I supposed to do now? I just turn around and I point at my back. The big. What do you got there? <laughs> Try it. You'll like it. <laughs> well, Yo Gabba Gabba. Yo Gabba Gabba style. <laughs> it's so she she kind of she literally grabs it and it's like strapped to your back. She lifts you up with it, <laughs> turns it, and just like <laughs> and puts you back down again. And takes a huge deep gulp. Yeah, that's good. And I turn to you guys, and my, I'm like, you actually see stars go in my eyes. I'm like, so cool. <laughs> so she, um, she just, she just, yeah, she puts you down, and I still have to finish the job. You are still going to be delivered to High Moon, but we are stuck here for a few days. But I'm going to go out on a limb and trust you. That you're not going to fuck off the first chance I turn my back. So I'm not going to put you in prison. And I'm not going to manacle you. But if you run, I will find you. And I will fucking kill you. Well, I probably won't kill you. I'll just beat you up a little bit. You're not worth anything to be dead. I couldn't right? think of a better way to go, Rin. You're not the one. Oh. <laughs> I'm a little jealous. <laughs> I know, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You want to be chased too? <laughs> I want to be killed by Rin. <laughs> Anything by Rin. So yeah, so she she just looks at you. Does that sound good? That sounds good. All right, I gotta go take care of Heron. If you're gonna be going anywhere, please tell me. I'll be on the ship. And she turns around, and Bly doesn't say much. She just kind of nods at you guys and. She kind of whispers something under her breath. You guys can all make perception checks to hear uh, what she said. 23. Oh, Ooh. oh no! <laughs> 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 it, 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 it did it, something wrong. It, yeah, it, it, it basically hopped off the carpet and then landed on the bar and the chair. And oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I got a 16. <laughs> <laughs> perception, so what? Six and 
save so, it for me. So, yeah. 22. Okay. 11. 20. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you got higher than 16, or 16 or higher, um, she just kind of mutters it, like, to herself, but weirdly kind of directed at you. She was like, that was one bitchin' fight. And she walks away, but she's talking to herself. <laughs> and she doesn't even look at you when she says it. She's walking away. So she takes off with Rin, leaving the four of you um, apparently free of, you know, you're not going to be imprisoned as long as uh, she's trusting you. Yeah. Um, we still have our weapons and everything on us? From- uh, yep, yeah, from the fight. Yep, yeah, she didn't even take those. Nice. All right, guys. So do we want to go fuck off into the woods? I oh, think we man. do. I feel like it's like when I was with my parents, and you had the decision. You say, "Hey, you want to come help me? At, you know, kill these bandits." And they're gonna say no, so then you can't. Or maybe they could say yeah and help you. Or then you did, or you could just lie, and they wouldn't know, and just do it by yourself. So are you saying we should go? Is that is that what uh, <laughs> I didn't understand? Uh, in other it was, words, it was very good with the parents, but I don't know how that relates to us. Well, do we can ask the just the cars to come. Oh, but then oh. if they say no, we, can, we can't go. So we'll persuade them to say yes. Rin did just say we're no good to them dead. Or we could just lie and, and, and go, and then they wouldn't know. I don't know. Unless we die. <laughs> I feel it's a better idea <laughs> if we bring them with us. Yeah, like I'm sure they'll be bored sitting around too. Yeah. Them, they kind of they kind of like fighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and they're probably sad. So it's it you know it it's good for their spirit. That's what I'm gonna say, tell them. It's good for your spirit. So but here's yeah, the just thing. Just write that one down. They're, yeah. They're, 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 they're <laughs> good for your spirit. They're, um, they're they're money. They like money. Oh. So are Ooh. we gonna share the booty with? them? Let's not tell them about that. They don't know. Yeah. Ain't nobody sharing booty. I'm learning so much from you guys. <laughs> Whoa, that is so... Don't you think that's wrong? Mm. No. I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to learn. I usually give all my booty away. It's... Do you? Yeah, look, I... <laughs> that's I she, pulls, she pulls out a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, look, I kept track of all my finances. <laughs> I think actually, I gave it to somebody to, to look at the bowl. I mean, like, here's my everything to look at a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> the bowl is important. We all pitched in for the bowl. I don't know where the rest went. I don't know. I, I just, I need to. Tasty unicorn. Oh. <laughs> you drank it all. You gave That's it away to the bartender. Yeah, to the bartender for yourself. I'm just not used to this. <laughs> I, I used to just trap, kill, keep what you kill, that kind of thing. I'm still doing <laughs> like, let's be honest. <laughs> I don't. I just need to learn from you guys how to how to like buy, how to get how to manage my finances. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sad lessons of the day. <laughs> the next team, next campaign is <laughs> yeah. all about how to saving our finances, <laughs> managing taxes, our tax return. Okay, boy. so so you guys want to keep it from them? What if they find out? Helen asked us if we could go find them. And that she would give us what she could if we did. Okay. It doesn't feel right, but okay. And and it seems like they just like they like killing bad guys. So it's its own yeah. reward. It is. It's a good therapy for them. It is. A, it's a good reward. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. So, what do you guys want to do? Um, I'm gonna lead the charge. So see if uh, Rin and Blythe would like to escort us. <laughs> All right, so you go to, you start to walk over to them, and they're just standing there, um, just, like, just at the edge of the dock, and as you start to get closer, they're, they're like, they, they're high-fiving each other. They're just high-fiving. <laughs> so <morose. laughs> So sad over the wall. <laughs> I'm just going to, like, walk in, like, hey! <laughs> and, oh, no? They, they, they kind of look at you, and Bly's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, you know how we were just fighting all those pirates and there was that really douchey caster guy? Rin just kind of nods. Yeah, I remember him well. So we were talking to Helen, and uh, she wants to know if we could go and uh, kind of make sure that guy's out of the way. I don't necessarily want to kill anybody who could be innocent. We don't really know what's going on. He's not innocent. 
He's responsible for Whitford's death. Yeah. I'm in. Revenge is best for the spirit. Yeah. yeah. Is that what I wrote? That's what you wrote. That's good. Okay. I was, already, she said I was yes. already sold. <laughs> <laughs> she, she did already say yes. But now I'm not in anymore. <laughs> oh my god. And I started scratching it up. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, just revenge! <laughs> um, and Blythe just nods. She's pretty quiet. She doesn't say a lot. She just nods in agreement. And so Rin's like, any leads? Um, I don't know shit about walking around in the jungle. Don't worry. I do. Apparently. Every time I say that, not so good. But, <laughs> um, the last place he was seen was between behind that building he disappeared behind, so I right. figure we'll start there. Alright, lead the way. She's already got all of her gear. It's covered in blood. Like She's still completely covered in gore from her, the fight that you guys are in. She's still kind of burned, She's but she's healed herself a little bit. But yeah. um, Is there anything you guys need from in town before we head out? Mm, I wonder if they, there's any place that has healing potions or anything like that. Healing potions are very expensive. Oh, yeah, that's why I need booty. <laughs> <laughs> um, did we find the ring? Oh, yeah. She I took it, remember? It. <laughs> it's for her oh, own god. Yeah, yeah. Baby. <laughs> Jesus. This dying man who just saved us. Whatever. We're not going to do this again. Yeah, she just looks at you. I yeah. think we should probably... Do you think that Harem would want to come, or do you think that he's too upset to join us on this journey? He just kind of, or she just looks over to Blythe and Blythe shrugs her shoulders. Yeah, I don't think he's kind of in mourning right now. Okay. They were kind of together, oh. and um, I don't think he's gonna be doing anything anytime soon. He just needs time. He'll be all right. He's got God. <laughs> What's that? I really hope the mic picked all that up. <laughs> yeah, remember to. It, you, oh, right. You can whisper, but okay, not whisper. Yeah. Like not whisperly. Yeah. I turned to Shriella and said, What's that? And I said, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Alright, so they get their stuff like they gear them up and put their backpacks over their shoulders, and you are going to try to find the where they headed out of the town into the jungle? Yeah. All right, so you start to go down that alley, and it's a very narrow town. Like, the town is built almost like in one street all the way along the ridge of the of the water, of the coastline. So it's a very long town, but very narrow. It doesn't go very far into the jungle at all. So it's not difficult if you see where they went, and you literally have to walk about 40 feet, and you're already into the jungle. The jungle kind of almost envelops the town. It hangs over top of it. The trees are very large. Um, and now, as... What time of day is it right now? I think it's I think it's like late afternoon. Um, you can see dark clouds start to form up, and you just get this immediate sense that as a, as a ranger, the the weather is turning, and there's probably going to be um, a storm, a rainstorm. But you head, which means you don't have a lot of time to follow these tracks. Yeah. So you walk out into the jungle a little bit. This is a little bit different than what you're used to. You're used to much more uh, like forested area. This is a very different um, environment. Okay. So you're feeling a little um, little unsure. But you walk out and you start to take a look around for tracks. You remember that two of them were wearing heavy armor. That should help. So why don't you go ahead and make a survival check? Oof. <clears throat> uh, that's eight. You guys can also make it. Um, your difficulty is a little bit higher, though. Survival is based on wisdom. Oh. So you add your wisdom to it. Sure, how do you guys... Ooh. 21. 19. 14. Alright. So you search around and the rain starts to just, you can hear the, the distant rumble of thunder and rain just kind of starts to just very lightly mist down and it's the precursor to the storm coming in. And you're trying to look around, you're feeling a little overwhelmed, so you're worried about the time, you can't seem to notice anything, but Petunia, who's a little bit closer lower to the ground, you go about 40 feet further in, just looking around, and sure enough, you find two sets of heavy boot prints. And you find a very, very thin boot print that you would guess is probably the, the, the wizard. Okay. And uh, it goes literally straight further into the jungle. It doesn't deviate. There's no path here. This is just jungle. There's no road or anything like that. They are going straight into the jungle. Okay. Uh, but you have found the track, and you can follow them. Okay. I'm just going to point it out to you guys. I'm like, this way, and then... Can you 
see it, you can see it now. So yeah, you can, once yeah, you point yeah, it out, yeah. yeah. Everyone can see it, let's go. <laughs> Alright, so who's leading? Um, I think Rinch. <laughs> Rin? Oh, <laughs> she doesn't know what she's doing. No, I think yeah, Nina okay. Now that you yeah. can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So when you when you when you actually say that out loud, I think Rin should, and you look back, and she's about twenty feet behind you, and she's struggling. She's like in heavy armor, and she's like <laughs> slipping on logs, and like she's really clumsy. Like, like, in a battle, uh, maybe not. <laughs> a fierce warrior out in the jungle, complete baby. And she's getting. You can see that she's getting mad. She's ah, you stupid vines. She's ah, I hate jungles. And then she's swatting mosquitoes. This has balls, and she's only forty feet in. Like she's not <laughs> been in the jungle at all. And Blythe is just like hopping and, and leaping gracefully, uh, no problem for her. But she's keeping pace. So who's in the front then? You are. I will. Okay. And then, uh, I suppose probably Blythe, Blythe is probably Blythe, and maybe you would have yeah. the. Uh, the tail. No, need to be in the middle. No, we need yeah, the middle. Okay. You guys in the back. All right. The heavy, the heavy's in the back. Yeah. Okay. So you journey for a while. the The island itself is it's a fairly large island. I mean, it's it, you figure if you wanted to go all the way around, it would probably take you a few days. It's it's fairly large. This is one of the largest central islands. Uh, the rest gets smaller as you go further out. Um, <coughs> you're not exactly sure what's even on this island. You know that Red, the town of Red Rock is there, but if there's any other other towns, you're not sure. Probably not. So you continue on to the jungle, and you've been going for about an hour when that rain, all of a sudden you hear a crack in the sky and the rain just buckets down. And it's like right out of those Vietnam movies where it's just, you can hardly see in front of you, it's just sheets and rivers start kind of like flowing. And you are moving at an upward angle because as I said, the mountain, it's mountainous all the way to the center, right? And the town is on the edge. And it's starting to get pretty tough. The The ground is getting very mucky. As you put your feet down, they sink up to your ankle, up to your your calf muscle. Petunia's having a much harder time. You're lighter, but you still sink because you're wearing heavy armor yeah. and you have weapons. And you start sinking up to over your knees. And Rin, every once in a while, will grab you. And you guys are just getting completely bogged down and covered in this thick, kind of gray, clayish mud. Uh, and it starts to, like, there's a redness to it as well. And it's very, very heavy. You guys have been going for about an hour and you would guess you're probably about a half mile and you haven't made that much progress it is so slow going uh you guys can each make a constitution save as you start trudging through this heavy foliage oh my god 13 13 7 3 <laughs> <laughs> so Shriala and uh leah seem to be okay they're pretty tired let's see how the others are. okay i rolled 17 twice um, they're both fine, but Petunia and Van start to struggle. I mean, it makes sense. You're you're much smaller, and it's harder for you to pull your way through. And every once in a while, Ren will pull you up out of the muck, just and then push you up onto a log, or she's kind of helping you go, and she's struggling too. She's wearing like half plate armor. Wow. She probably weighs about four hundred pounds, and she's just struggling. And she she's doing okay, but she's getting winded. But Van and Petunia, after about an hour's uh, journey, are just exhausted. Um, you guys can keep going, but it's going to be very difficult for you. And you're going to have to start making some athletics checks to start going through as the rain comes down even harder. And you can now start seeing, it starts to slip. You're on an angle about like this. It's not bad. And it adds, probably about in another 500, 600 feet, it starts to go up a little bit steeper. The tracks are still there, but they're getting a lot harder to follow at this point. Um, if you stop and rest, you're probably gonna lose them. But you also have two party members that are absolutely exhausted right now. Um, do you guys want to stop and take a short rest? Oh my god, yes, please. I can't <laughs> do it anymore. I wish well, I brought some rum. But won't we lose them? You have it on your back. I'm still carrying the rum. So you left it. Oh, no wonder I'm having so, so much <laughs> Maybe I should drink all this and then we can go. <laughs> Wouldn't want it to go to waste. Um, okay, so I would like to, I suppose, make an athletics check, try to climb a tree and see if there's sure. any easier way to see tracks from up there. Okay, so you're going to be rolling this uh, at a disadvantage because so it, it's so slippery. Uh, you could you could use ropey. Yeah. Yep. yeah <laughs> so why don't why don't you just actually just make a uh, an, a dexterity check to kind of throw the rope up and okay. see if you can hook it on something. Okay, 
So you just, you tie just like a, a metallic, just something heavy in your bag to the end of it, like a pot or something like that. You hurl it over a branch and you kind of pull it into a little nook in the branch and it's tight. So now you don't have a disadvantage. You can okay. make a normal athletics check. 16. Yeah. So it takes you a little bit. Your hands are slipping on the rope a bit and it's still bucketing down. You guys are just sitting in pouring rain. You have no cover or anything. The, the canopy of the jungle is pretty heavy, but it's just like... All it does is the leaves are making it come down like in spouts on yeah. top of your head. Uh, but you managed to get up. How high in this tree do you want to go? Um, like, I don't know, this sounds like a really stupid way of explaining it, but like deer hunting level, like where you build a, tr- a thing in okay. a tree. Okay, so you're going to go up at like 15 feet maybe? Yeah. Okay, so you get up there and you pull yourself into the nook and put your back against the tree to give yourself some balance and it is slippery up here you're, you're starting to feel the precariousness of it um the rain is just coming down really hard it's very hard to see but you sit there and wait for kind of maybe cuts in the rain to see if you can see anything. you can go ahead and make a perception check perception. oh Ooh, nice uh 24. so there there is moments where the rain Kind of comes down in a wave, and then there's a bit of a lull, and then it comes down again. You're, you're just being patient and waiting for it, and you start to see that if you climb for maybe another mile, because you have pretty good vision, you're an elf, if you go for about another mile, you're going to come to a plateau, and it's this lone plateau in the middle of like hills, like this sloped area leading up to it. Um, it's a fairly large plateau, probably 50 to 100 feet in, in width and in length. Uh, it's... You look anywhere else, you don't see anywhere else anyone could go. Uh, everywhere else is completely going to be bogged down by this weather. Yeah. It looks like a natural place to go to, but it's you know they're not going to make it. It's too steep. Um, and then, so there's no other way around, no trails, it's all just... What's that? Uh, no trails or anything, there's no. just a... Uh, no, this is just completely jungle. natural jungle here. It's just a natural plateau. Leah, what do you see? Um, it definitely looks like there's a plateau up ahead. It's the only place they could have possibly been heading, considering that this is all pretty steep um, and the weather's really not helping much. But I, I don't think that anybody um, wearing anything more than leather is going to be able to make it up there. It's way too mucky, way too much mud. I mean. <clears throat> I can take these two if I turn into a tiger. I mean, I'm not the great forest anymore. I should be okay. I don't know. We don't know that. Do you think it's worth a risk? Because then we still have Rin and um, Blythe. We can't leave them behind, and they're not going to want to stay behind. No, no. I just thought that, you know, they might be able to handle it. Probably Rin, not with her armor. Yeah. Like, I, I can see her sinking into her waist. It's just torrential. Um, can you throw the rope down if you get up there? No, um, it's, it's like a mile. Uh, okay. Unless, <laughs> a you have, mile. unless ropey is a mile long. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like that's a lot ropey. of rope to carry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah ropes for me. Yeah. Mm. Um, I don't think I can do it any longer. I'm, no, I, we gotta go back. How do you feel, Petunia? Mm, I feel like I want to drink the rest of this cake. <laughs> I don't think that's going to help you get up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it should be lighter. <laughs> yeah, I'll be lighter. <laughs> um, I wonder if someone can go spy on them. <laughs> Maybe we should send a... Maybe well, we should split the party? No, no. Oh. no. Yeah, that sounds good, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. No! The worst! No, no. no. Um, Wait, it, so it's like a hill up and then it plateaus? So it's basically where we are now. Mm. It starts to get more steep mm-hmm. and then a plateau. So we don't have much more to go, but it's going to be a lot more difficult than what we've gone through so far. So if I cast a spell on someone, like jump, their jump distance is tripled. Would they be able to jump us all the <clears> How long does that spell last? Um, oh, a minute. This is a minute out of combat, too. Yeah. yeah. If it was like an hour, it would probably yeah. theoretically help yeah. someone, yeah. but mm-hmm. if it's only right. a minute, it won't help. Mm. I didn't look at that part. <laughs> well, right. maybe I should just, while well, we're sitting here, maybe I should uh, uh, ready a ritual and use beast sets. Because seagulls are really dumb. 
So maybe I can, that, that hasn't worked for me in the past. So maybe I can find something smarter. And <laughs> so get in the jungle. Like, in the jungle. It might just work. <laughs> I finally get. I finally get to <laughs> <Alex's> like, <laughs> No, uh, Petunia, for once, I'm surprised to say this, but that might be a good idea. If you can find some sort of animal, how long does your um, bee sense ritual work? It's up to an hour. Um, yeah, and then I have to just decide, like, disengage from it to make it end. But once I'm in, in the trance, I, um, I'm out of commission. But I see through the eyes. Right, so how long, how long are you out of it once you're finished I, with your spell? Um... Or what does do? it do? I touch and uh, I think must like, use action to. I have to just use an action to end it. I think, so. I think it just oh, okay. lasts. Yeah, it lasts as long. So you as don't as have any mm-hmm. sort of like punishment for doing it. It's well, well, except for that I'm out of commission. I can't like fight somebody if they come. Like I'm. But that's, that's while you're in. Oh, the while spare. you're yeah, doing I'm it. in a yeah. trance. Okay. Yeah, so I'm um, just like Mur. like that. Because I mean, I'm thinking like <clears throat> there's no way we can move through here while this storm is still going on. Everyone's mm-hmm. exhausted. If we take a short rest. And you find some sort of like bird or something that can follow their trail. Go yeah. up there, see if you can find them. Continue to follow them for as long as we take a break. Then yeah. once it's over with, we could yeah. go we up there and find them. Once, yeah. like once the yeah. weather's bad, at least yeah. we still have kind of a trail to go off of. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Yeah. So why don't you make a perception check while you look around? <laughs> the you guys, you're finding an animal. <laughs> you guys can all try to like spot something, and it's pretty heavy rain, so yeah. the birds are going to probably be sheltered in the trees under the. the Twelve. Uh, Fourteen. Eleven. Uh, is this perception. Yeah. Uh, yeah Wisdom based. Uh, Twenty-two. All right, so everyone's looking around, and there's, like, not any animals in this area, but you look up, and a little bit higher up from where Leah is in that same tree, you can see that there is a really colorful, almost looks like a toucan. It's sitting in the tree, and it's, like, ruffling its feathers because the water's pouring down, and it's trying to get under cover, and it's, it's just sitting there, and that's the only bird you can see in this area. Great, I'm gonna go talk to Toucan Sam now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit it's bigger toucan than a Toucan. Joe. Yeah, toucan Joe. It's his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's cool. Um, okay. Do you, do you, you could probably communicate to it, right? Um, she has to be able to touch it, I think. Well, I can communicate with, uh, I can do speak with animals. So, speak, speak with small animals, so maybe I can lure it down by. Doing the speak with small okay, animals. Okay, so so you, you cast the spell and the, and you see the t- the toucan up there. How does your toucan sound? Oh God, can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he just talk? Toucan Sam just talks. How does, how does the toucan sound? This is Toucan Joe. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a duck. <laughs> he's a it's he's a kind of half duck. So he. Gets, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So he hears it. He, lo- he lo- lo- looks down and hears a duck uh, quack. <laughs> so the spell is cast, but he doesn't understand it because you're speaking duck. How does the toucan sound? I don't want toucan sound. It's quack. <laughs> 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 I like that. What can we do that? Think about a parrot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 she's she's, she's quacking that apparently. <laughs> so instead of a little quack, like elongated. <laughs> Elongated. Waka, waka, waka. So this is where we are in the jungle. Here we are. No, elongate your quack. And we're like, okay, well, okay, so this is lessons on how to speak to Ken tonight. Can um, my an- animal handling skills help here? Uh, nope. She's got. I'm just dancing out. around in the bug <laughs> way. Quack, quack. This is what um, we get for trying to come up with another plan that involves animals. <laughs> 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 like, this never our sixth <laughs> time in ten episodes that we've done something like this. So, so make a make a handle animal check or, while you're okay. squawking. Or okay, no, you literally have to squawk while you do it. <laughs> no! <laughs> and this is where the D20 babes gang up on me. This is where we lose all of our followers. Yeah, <laughs> this is where we lose all of our You followers. know, I have speak with um, animals oh. too, so if she can't do it, I'll take a look. I got a nat one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no. I have three in animal handling, so that's a four. Alright, so <laughs> Petunia is like, she's. What she's doing is like she's doing a duck right now, and she's she's actually flapping her arms and she's walking in a circle and also doing a chicken bob at the same time. <laughs> It's Not like, doing anything that would be too okay, canny. Okay, so, development right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't want to hurt Petunia's feelings, so I kind of go to the edge. You decide edge, you do it. And I cast Speak with Animals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get a point of 
I know that, like, I'm laughing my ass off at Petunia while you're trying to not hurt her feelings. Just, like, pointing and laughing. Yeah, yeah. just distracting her. Can so I have some more of that role? Yeah. <laughs> so you, everyone's having a ball, like, yeah. kind of sneak over to the I, side. I, <laughs> 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 All right, so He's you go ahead and get a handle animal check. <laughs> a one. I oh, one. I hope so. <laughs> oh, oh so you you called it! Why would you call it? Two in a row! It's a curve! It's okay, I have six for animal handling, but seven. Um, <laughs> so you still have a one. <laughs> Make, oh, do you want to use a statue? The worst oh, one. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Man, we're in the mud! Okay. So... Go ahead. So the bird, the bird actually, you're like, oh, I got it, and you, it's, it drops straight out of the tree and starts coming straight down at you. Make a dexterity save. Oh throw. no, it's angry at me. <laughs> you did its mating call. Yes, that's oh, exactly sorry. what happened. Uh, Nineteen. <laughs> so you dive out of the way, but when you do, the bird looks like it was gonna come and like claw to the back of your head, and it's, it's a male toucan. You know that immediately because it was definitely gonna hump your head. Uh, you dive out of the way and it flies straight down at and it kind of misses so it flops in the air a bit it hits the ground rolls and lands right at Petunia's feet and gets up and is covered in water and is trying to move and you stop your chicken dance and you see the toucan is at your feet now you did it yeah yeah Yay. hey toucan friend yeah and then I take a chicken wing oh I'm like oh no he doesn't want that <laughs> Um, and then you I'm how old is this chicken wing? <laughs> it's really, it's really old. Yeah, that was I think like three weeks ago. Yeah, at least. I was saving it and I'm trying to give it to everybody. Um, so I'm just going to uh, put my hand. I'm going to touch it. Okay. All right. So it lets you. It's it's kind of bogged down with water right now. Yeah. It's a little disoriented. I'm just like, hey, you like me? Nice toucan. And then I just pet it. And then I uh, oh, uh, but I have to ready my ritual. It's fine. Okay. You just you just make it part, I'm doing a little part dance. of the ritual. <laughs> you know, little dance. This is such an awkward ability. I gotta say, getting the animal, doing the thing is just very awkward. <laughs> At least that's why it doesn't work very often. That's why it doesn't work. You know what's amazing? We have, we have the same spells, but like my variation very different than yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you make it very majestic, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, I like. Kind of do my little dance and okay. then do the little trance. Okay, so you feel your consciousness like it moves. You just you have a sense of yourself and it flows down your arms through your fingers and you just immediately go into this creature and you're like all of a sudden super horny. Um, I don't have to be a horny bird. You are the horniest <laughs> bird sorry. you've ever been in your life. <laughs> <laughs> but you you have full control. Like you feel the sense of this bird. You kind of want to shag something right now, but. You have enough self-awareness, so you're like, I should probably do that later. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is very uh, weird. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, a take off. Okay. And... So you fly straight up, and it is fairly difficult because it is raining really hard. There was a reason that that bird was trying to find shelter. So it is a pretty tough slog to get through. The You're kind of like going from tree to tree and resting. The bird is obviously tired. And eventually you get up to that plateaued area. And you start to like soar around it. What are you? Are you just kind of getting a general feel of the the area, or what are you doing? I'm looking for for them. I'm looking for the wizard and the. Dwarf. Okay, go ahead and make a perception check. Okay, um, so sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> so you do a search of that entire plateau area, and it's very heavily. The jungle is very heavy here as well. It is on a flatter plain. You manage to spot what looks like a unsheltered campsite. Oh, okay. There is um, a campfire pit. There's obviously no fire in there right now because it's pouring rain. You can see a bunch of people's belongings kind of piled up, but they're not covered. And up on a little ridge, you'd have to walk up this kind of steep, uh, steep ridge to get to a higher area on the plateau. There is a, a large chest, but there's nobody here. All this stuff is completely unguarded. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna try to circle closer and see also if I can hear, see if I can hear anything. <laughs> um, okay, how close do you want to get? Um, you're like, you're right now, you're about 50 feet in the air. Like, you're just getting a general view. Mm -hmm. To get any more details, you're gonna have to go down probably about 15 feet from the ground. Yeah, I'm gonna try to see if there's something I can perch on. Okay. So you swoop down towards the campsite, and as you get closer, you can see that, um, it's kind of, just a little bit out this campsite area, 
as you get closer to it, you can see there's two stones, two high stones, probably about four and a half feet high next to each other. They're right next to the campsite. Um, so you're, is that kind of, you just want to go perch on those stones? Sure. All right, so you go down and you perch yourself on one of them and you take a look around, make a perception check. Okay, good, that's better. Uh, six, 19. Okay, <clears throat> so you take a quick scan around and the other stone, which is about 10 feet to the right, the campfire is in the middle. Beyond the campfire is a cave. Okay. You can see there's a natural cave that goes into the end. It's getting very steep behind where this plateau evens out. It's really steep all of a sudden. And you can see that this is probably where it starts to go into the actual the mountain, the central mountain. That cave system goes into there, you would assume. Um, but you look around and you notice that the stone to your right is not a stone. It's a statue. And it's a, a dwarven statue of a, of a, a heavy plate armor, um, but it's a it's a full stone statue. And mm -hmm. you, then you look kind of curious, and you look down, and you're also standing on another one of those statues. Hmm. Um. Can I actually look into see into the cave to see if there's any lights or hear anything? Can I? I'm gonna do a drive by. It's a, Fly by oh, the cave. I'm just gonna go whoop right by, by the entrance to see. If um, I can... You go, you swoop by it, and mm. it's dark. You don't, you can't, you. It's pitch black after about ten feet. You can't see any further. You don't see anyone in there. Okay, I'm uh, gonna do another aerial to see if I can see them walking away from the plateau or going anywhere else. Uh, you've seen everything you can see with this bird. Okay. Okay. Um, so I... after about that takes you about a half hour. You drop. You drop out and yeah. you return to your body, and you just kind of feel a whoosh, and you, your head shakes and you become conscious again. She just kind of was laying there with her head back and her eyes kind of rolled back, and uh, every once in a while she's like, ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> she just make these weird noises. Um, yeah, she's back. Well, what'd you see? That bird is really dirty. That's a dirty bird. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to know. Yeah, you don't want to know. You don't want to know. Um, and kind of disturbed. Ooh. Um, well, I don't see them traveling away from the plateau, but I don't see them at, at the plateau. There's a big chest. It might be full of booty up there. And there's a cave. And there's uh, a cave is built, I think, by dwarves. There's dwarven statues. Um, dwarves build good caves. So they're probably hiding in there. Dwarves are hiding in there? Uh, well, there's a one dwarf, and there's one wizard. Oh, yeah. There's yeah, two. the one dwarf yeah, and the two, wizard. Yeah, two dwarves. Two dwarves, yeah. dwarves okay. and one yeah. wizard. Yeah. But they're probably hiding in the dwarf cave, because a dwarf would know that they build good caves. I know they build good Everyone knows they build good caves. They do build good caves. Yeah. Yeah. If it's built. Yeah. It sounds okay. like they're out there, but... We might be at a lot of disadvantage if we go into their mm -hmm. cave. And also, if they've, you know, a cave takes a long time to build. If they've been here this whole time, why are they attacking the city now? Well, it might have been there already, yeah. and they're, they're just using that as a place to hide out. Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah, I think so. I hide it, there. It seems like this hasn't really been explored very much, at least recently. There's no paths or anything that I can see, so who knows how long that cave has been there. Okay. Did you recognize anything from the statues from your past travels Dwar with dwarves? Mm. Do you know with dwarves ever? No, they don't like me. They always kick me out of the cave. <laughs> uh oh, of different uh, caves. Yeah, there's like yeah. <laughs> They're so snobby. I'm just snobby. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's all right. Else. I haven't really interacted with dwarves. Oh. Actually, so oh. well, so are every so is everyone actually. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah. Except for barbarians, are cool. Barbarians, you know, they're like, come, um, raid with us, party with us, woo! Yeah. Okay. So, so Raiden's like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Raiden. <laughs> um, we're setting up camp here mm -hmm. until the rain stops. Nah, they're probably not going anywhere. Petunia found a cave where there's, we believe it's a dwarf cave, where they could possibly be hanging out and hiding in. Well, let's go. We can't leave right now. There's no way we're going to make it up that hill. It's practically a landslide uh, with the rain. You're probably right. Well, what do you think? I don't know anything about being outside that often. What uh, this weather? Do you think it's going to be around a while? 
Can I roll? Survival? Yeah, survival check. Yeah. Oh, uh, eight. You have no idea. Yeah, no, oh, man. Do we all roll? Yeah. For yeah. Okay. Oh no, where is it? Here. A druid would have an actual sense of the weather too. One. No nice. Uh, eighteen. Did you roll a one, Ben? Yeah. Oh. So three in total. <laughs> Lots it's of like, ones. It's raining. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 15. I see. Right. So you you figure so it's late afternoon now. Well, it's it's getting into oh, evening, evening, and so the the sun is already setting, and it it, it means barely cracking through those clouds anyway. Uh, you figure by f- morning it should pass, but you're gonna need to make shelter. Or you're gonna get washed away here. Um, you could head back into town, but you're already a mile in. Mm. Uh huh. It's not gonna get better till morning, guys. So we're kind of stuck here. All right. Um. Do you guys want to head back, or should we try to set up camp here for the night? I don't want to walk in the mud anymore. Yeah, I'm pretty tired too. I yeah. think we should just stay here. Okay. I have rum. I'm Ren's like, I That's like that. Like, like half of a camp. We're good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I guess it's up to Leah and I. Just All right, so <laughs> yeah, you guys need to make a survival check, yeah. and we'll I'm see how if you guys both do. Checks. Do well enough. Well. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, no, oh, the one. Tonight. 14. Uh, so I have five. Is you got 14 total? Yeah. So it takes way longer because Shriella is not helping. She keeps trying to like, <laughs> like pull leaves down as like just to like make a covering in this little. You're at right now. You're up against this log, so the water's kind of flowing down from the water. It's a little bit of a cascade. So you try to like build just like a little bit of a canopy underneath this log to give you some shelter. And she keeps like passing things down to you that are completely useless. Like just like stop giving me things. Stop it. So it takes you. It takes you like two hours rather than like a half hour. It's just taking more time. And it's it, this, this situation's not ideal but after two hours you manage to build a decent enough shelter that you guys can take a rest a long rest so you get all your hit points back all your spells back um is anyone taking watch throughout the night or are you guys all just gonna shelter in and and try to get some rest um i'll take the first one i'll take the second okay that's all you need i'm gonna tell so can i take um life aside okay and i'm just gonna say I, they sometimes have problems with shape changing in the middle of the night. Yeah, Whitford told me. Yeah, so can you also keep a watch on them? Yeah, I'll stay awake. Okay, cool. Thank you. She just nods. She just pats your head. Get some <laughs> sleep. Yeah. So she stays up. Um, she's not tired. So she only rests for a few hours. She's half elf, so she doesn't need so much rest either. The morning comes around, nothing happens throughout the night, and at about the seven hour mark throughout the night, the rain lets up and the sun comes out and it's just humid as fuck. It's just like, you can, it's like 100% humidity. And the bugs are just like, there's mosquitoes everywhere and it is awful. You can just, your clothes are now just wet and sticking to you and there's no drying off. It feels miserable. But the sun is out and it's starting to, like, you can just crack through the canopy of the jungle and it's going to be a little bit easier going today. So, you guys begin the climb. Uh, everyone make constitution saving throws. This is, you're going to get there, it's just it's going to take you a while and to see how tired everyone is when they get to the top. Yes. Seven. Oh. Ten. Uh, Ten as well. Uh, Ten is the number you need, so. Oh, oh, oh man. I you're got just almost there. Seven. Same. Oh, you don't have seven. Though. We were up on that. Building. Yeah, it's seven. Building. <laughs> yeah. Can you pass me the book behind you? We're building. We're tired. Is that yours? Or? Yeah. This one is not mine. Okay. And you guys stayed watching. All you did was drink wine. Is that yours? Yeah. <laughs> just, just have some stickers yeah. in there. Okay, no problem. Okay, so who did not get it? Just So Leah, you are... And uh, Shriela. So you guys oh, yeah. are uh, fatigued. <laughs> It's yep. a condition. I'm just going to read what that does to you when you get to the top. I think it just means you take penalties on certain things, but let's just see here. The rest of us are all just like, oh, I had such a good sleep. I just feel great for a hike. Oh. I feel very rested, but this freaking <laughs> mosquitoes. Yeah, there's bugs everywhere. So yeah, the rum really helped you guys. Great, thanks. 
I say some for the morning. I'm like, oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Rick Fest. Like, ah. Vibration. <laughs> Got the mosquitoes really drunk by Grotty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm just holding my, my snow weasel as far away from me as possible because it's making me so hot. I'm just like, I can't do it <laughs> and it Okay, well, down. maybe Chad can let me know. What happens when you're fatigued? I might, I might have my DM screens, but they're behind me, so I can't actually. Um, so as you guys, oh, we'll tell you what that does in a second. And if I tell um, as you get to the crest of this plateau, uh, it's very, again, it's, the jungle does not let up. You just come over the crest of this hill and the jungle just continues on. You're still stepping in, in a kind of a thin mud now. It's starting to dry up a little bit, but it's still, you go about ankle deep into it and it's, it, it is exhausting. Um, but you start to walk across the plateau. You can actually make a survival check to see if you can connect what you saw with the bird to where you are right now. Whoa! Ooh. Nat 20! Okay, and I, yeah. I have a 3 in survival, so it's Yeah, you figure out where you are. So you know that if you head like straight up, so you're right at the center of this plateau, if you head straight and just like to your left a little bit, that's where the cave is and where those statues were. Um, and it's probably like 100 feet away, like it's not very far. You're pretty tired, most of you, but like you can keep going. Leah and Triella are like, you're catching your breath when you get to the top. So basically, until you guys do a short rest, you guys are fatigued, which means you take disadvantage to all your rolls. Oh, oh. So did you want to take a quick one hour rest to get rid of that condition? Have a bite to eat and just... Yeah, uh, is there anywhere, like, looks shielded off like no one would be able to see us? Or... Uh, you're in a pretty heavy jungle. So, I mean, yeah, you could just hunker down. Yeah, um, and then I'm going to gather, I have... Um... Wanderer is one of my things where I can find food and water for me plus five people. Yeah. So. But it, yeah, isn't that isn't that only in your favorite terrain? Uh, it says if the terrain can provide it. Okay. We have that. As there you well. go. So you guys have enough food and water. You rest just to, for an hour to catch your breath and get some energy back, and you go back up to the top of the hill and out onto the plateau. So you guys just want to head straight towards that campsite, or what would you like to do? <clears throat> um. So, Petunia, when you saw it, it seemed deserted, or just, how did it look? Well, I have a good memory for maps, apparently. Okay, thanks for that information. <laughs> it's, I wrote it on my arm. Yeah, it is a thing that she would have um, yeah. a good memory of geography well, and be so. able to recall her trains and stuff. Yep. Yeah, cool. Yep. I wrote it on my arm. I drew it on my arm. Okay. Um, and, yeah, I, there's always this flat plateau, box of booty. Two statues that say that it's a well, I don't know. I think they say that it's a um, it's dwarven built. Um, this chest was there things around it. Like why was it just sitting there? It's just sitting there. Maybe it's a decoy, okay. or maybe it's a maybe it's a lure. Mm. I heard about those. Like a trap. Yeah, I heard about those. Everyone's you know it's, it's a rumor, but I think it's real. What traps? Bo- yeah, like you go up to the treasure chest, and it's in the forest, and you're like, I found treasure, and then it eats you. The, ch- the chest eats you? Yeah. I heard it happen to a friend of a friend that's a, a kid that lived down, down the, the hut next to me. <laughs> Are you sure that is? The chest eats you? Yeah. I, okay. Rin's like, that's so dumb. It's true. <laughs> I believe it. It happened to a friend of a friend whose kid, who was a friend of the kid that lived in the hut over from me. Well, I just thought... I've heard the same thing. Really? Yeah. See? See? It's true. The chest? Well, maybe... It's a weird world. Mm. All right. I'm not... Maybe it's not the chest, but it could be a trap. 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 The... <laughs> it's a trap! <laughs> <laughs> a trap or a trap? It's a tar. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> um, so, maybe we can do an illusion whenever we get there and upstairs of what happens. I can just cast, it is a second level spell, but I can cast Find Traps. And it can is, sense the presence of any trap within range. Uh, so anything, so a trap would mean uh, that would inflict a sudden or unexpected effect you consider harmful or undesirable. Um, yeah. So, so it wouldn't reveal like natural stuff, like an unstable ceiling or a hidden right. sinkhole, but just like an actual tra- like trap traps. that was meant for okay. to hurt people. All right, so you want to cast that thing and head towards it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if we're, well, are we there? Are we well, just you're, you're, you're at the edge of the plateau. <laughs> the edge, yeah. Okay, because this is 120 feet, so that would cover the area, right? So you're just going to cast it around this area? Feet. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's... I want to wait until we're, like, a little bit oh, closer. So, okay. that, yeah. like, if there's anything okay. within the cave. But yeah, okay. like, at the... Totally. Totally. But yeah, it, it has, has to be area you can see, right? Yeah, it's within my line of sight. So yeah. I have to see it. Yeah, that's okay. Cool. Who needs rogues? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding, rogues. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess we should stay really low and okay. head in. Are you, yeah. are you okay? Are you guys moving stealthy or... Stealthy. Stealthy, yeah. Okay. That's, should we roll for stealthy? We have to roll for stealthy? Okay, so you guys go forward, they're gonna make their rolls as well. So you guys are like starting to go forward, crouching down and Behind you is like clang, clang, uh, clang. Ren's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> really sorry about this, guys. And you look, Blythe is just gone. You don't even know where she went. She just disappeared. <laughs> um, so you guys go forward. Ren's being pretty loud, but she's wearing heavy armor. And you go about <laughs> thirty feet, and you are now you're getting closer to the the edge of that encampment. Uh, do you want to cast that spell? That should cover the area all the way around the encampment up to that cave. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I will cast my traps. Okay, so you cast the spell, and you put your hand down to the ground, and you just kind of, you don't see anything happen, you just feel this, like, connection with the ground and everything connected to it, and it just goes out in a wave in that in, in that uh, direction, and you don't feel or sense any kind of um, traps in this area. We're okay. <clears throat> There's no traps. Okay. Are you sure? Um, can yeah, it, none that people have set for us, but there might be natural things that could things in us. Yeah. yeah. So the the camp, the pit, the fire pit, and you can actually now where you're standing, you can see those two dwarven statues. Um, they're yeah, they're about thirty feet ahead of you. You can see them pretty clearly. The heavy jungle still, but you can see them. Um, you guys can, can all make we, perception checks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we roll? Yeah. I'm getting that. Why? Oh my God. <laughs> Seven. No! Oh, I thought oh. I had a 19. It's a one. <laughs> I was <laughs> shooting mistake. <laughs> no, it went like this. It slowed down. It was like, oh. you two. Oh, I was like, no. Another natural one. Wow. Wow. Like five, um, oh, wait, is this perception? Okay. Yeah. Seven. Six, <laughs> 22. Also seven. What is wrong with us tonight? <laughs> So, you're just kind of a little bit ahead, and as you get, you're still moving very slowly towards those those statues. You guys are keeping low. The rest of you are completely oblivious. You all of a sudden hear, just you, and also you can hear Blythe shout from somewhere, <clears throat> Incoming! And you hear foliage getting flat, and something coming from both sides of you at a very, very high speed. And they're heavy, and whatever it is, they are charging from both sides. Only Petunia and Blythe are aware of it. And we are going to take a quick ah! break. <laughs> <laughs> it was a trap! Dang it. It's always it's a trap! A trap. <laughs> <laughs>